So, okay. Uh, so after several technical issues, um, uh, well, I'm here and thank you very much for the invitation to give this talk. Um, uh, the title says Chemical Evolution of Galaxy, and I am going to try to, to summarize in the talk of what we are working in, in this area, in this broad area, uh, with particularly, uh, particularly focusing on the evolution of the metallicity gradients. So just to get into the subject, um, we know that uh, the, the current cosmological uh, or the current favorite uh, para uh, cosmological parad paradigm, lambda CDM, um, predict the formation of galaxies in a hierarchical way with the formation of this cosmic web within which the galaxy or the halos assemble and within the halos uh, galaxies uh, form. And the, complex, uh, the complexity of the process um, uh, requires the or, or points out uh, to the numerical simulation as a good way or as the a um, powerful way of analyzing the evolution of the structure at different uh, scales. And particularly, we are interested in the formation of galaxies. And um, uh, we have also um, focused on the joint evolution of the dynamical formation of the galaxy and the chemical patterns of the chemical evolution of the stellar population and the uh, interstellar medium, the gas phase. Uh, in the galaxies and uh, in the surrounding medium. So having the chemical evolution or the chemical abundances of the, of the variants provide uh, more information to understand or to uh, galaxy formation and to confront with observations. Um, so within this, uh, the, the numerical simulations that, that include uh, chemical evolution follow the, the, uh, the growth of the structure, uh, the collapse, the infold, the mergers, the cooling of the gas in the in the small halos that grow afterwards by accretion or mergers. And then we follow the star formation and the stellar evolution. And when we have the stellar evolution uh, included, we can um, include also uh, nucleosynthesis models for different sources, stellar sources, and follow the different chemical elements. And these chemical elements are uh, in, injected in the, into the interstellar medium changing, uh, modifying the properties of the interstellar medium, which will affect the subsequent star formation activity and uh, will produce so that the, uh, follow the subsequent uh, stellar population will be systematically enriched or will inherit the chemical uh, abundances of the interstellar medium. So these chemical elements also can be transported outward uh, to the to the circumgalactic and even the intergalactic medium by uh, stellar feedback or uh, AGN feedback, and also by uh, environmental effects. Uh, if part of the galaxy or the gas in the galaxy is stripped or um, or lost by uh, dynamical friction or strangulation, or, uh, sorry, um, rumbation. So. As uh, we form the galaxy and the galaxies uh, uh, synthesize, uh, the, the stellar population synthesize, uh, synthesize the chemical elements, uh, then we are systematically enriching the interstellar medium and the, 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 the variants in general in a particular way, in a way that is um, uh, related with the dynamical formation of the, of the components of the galaxies and the structure. So we want to understand this, uh, the origin of these chemical dynamical patterns and try to link the, the features that we see in this chemical dynamical patterns to different uh, processes that can give us hints on the, uh, on the formation history of galaxies of different mass and different morphologies. So one of these uh, features or, or the patterns that we found are the uh, metallicity gradients. In this case, I'm going to talk always about the metallicity gradients of H2 regions or star forming regions in these galaxies in general. So observations show us for many years now, we know that the, that galaxies and particular these galaxy have this negative metallicity gradients, which implies that the, uh, the central region of galaxies are more enriched than the outer parts. And uh, as you can see in this set of uh, galaxies metallicity uh, profiles from the SAMI survey, um, all these galaxies tend to ha have negative metallicity gradients. Some of them are quite flat or weak, and the others are uh, steeper. Um, so there is a, a, a variety of metallicity uh, profiles um, that should give us hints of the formation history of the of the galaxy and how the not, not only how the star formation proceed, the efficiency of the star formation, 
but also what other um, physical uh, processes can redistribute the material within the galaxy. So if we um, use numerical simulation to understand that and, uh, this and uh, resort to also physical principles, we know that if a, if a galaxy, uh, if a disk form um, inside out or a galaxy form inside out, then uh, we will have a negative metallicity gradient by definition because the central regions are more dense and they start they start forming a star year earlier and then they will have also tend to have a strong uh, or more efficient star formation because of the higher density and then the star formation will spread out of the disk and then it will proceed uh, uh, transforming gas into a star but in a more regular um, way so uh, we have this um, this negative um, profiles are set you can see here in the cosmological simulation that we have we can reproduce this negative metallicity gradients in these galaxies um, and also we have the age distribution and everything we can study this process and and it's quite a, um, it's, it's, um, we can understand how these um, uh, metallicity gradients negative metallicity gradient sets and also how the different um, efficiencies in the transformation of the gas into stars in the galaxy change the shape or the slope of the metallicity grade, gradients. And also internally, we have also supernova feedback, uh, maybe AGM feedback, but uh, mainly supernova feedback injecting chemical elements and energy, which will also uh, mix up the material inside the galaxy. Okay, But all these processes are consistent with uh, producing this negative metallicity gradient. But the fact is that galaxies are not isolated, and they are in interaction, and they, they accrete materials from uh, the, um, the surrounding regions, and they live in, the, in different environments. So mergers, interactions, even stellar migration, secular evolution of gas inflows can change this um, and mix, mix up the material and change the shapes. For example, this is an ex a, a work that we did to study the, how metallicity, uh, how uh, the interactions between two galaxies change the metallicity radiance from uh, the, the steep negative that we started uh, in the our initial condition to a flatter and even flatter metallicity gradient. And also uh, you can see that the metallicity in the central region is lower at certain stage of the interaction because <clears throat> as the galaxies interact, uh, they drive um, material from the, out, from the outer part of the, of the disk to the inner part. And because we have this negative metallicity gradient, these gas inflows are low metallicity or lower metallicity than the central region. And then you have this decrease of the metallicity first uh, with the gas that uh, falls in. Uh, but later, because this gas will trigger star formation, you can also have an increase of the metallicity in the later stage. And then because of these new stars that were formed, you may have supernova feedback uh, with energy uh, that blows part of the material and they will, this will produce uh, the subsequent decrease of the metallicity gradient. And you can see this here when we have uh, superposed the evolution of the metallicity gradient as a function of time during the merger before the peri first pericenter, the apocenter and the second pericenter. And you can see that uh, we have this effect. Uh, actually, we have several effects, the decrease of the metallicity gradients and the increase depending on the phase. I mean, if we first have the inflow, then the, uh, then the, the, the star formation activity, which will inject new oxygen, for example, in this case, and then enrich the central region again. And then the outflows will eject part of the material, and then we decrease the, the metallicity in the central region. And the slope, of course, will change correspondingly. Okay. And now in the outer region, you can see that the metallicity gradient uh, profiles also change, and they get flatter and more enriched. And this is because of the contribution of the disrupted material from the companion, and also because of the galactic fountain, so that material that um, was ejected from the central part of the galaxy is accreted in the outer part of the galaxy. So all these processes uh, modifies, uh, leave an imprint in the in the metallicity profile. Okay. Uh, so observations uh, now show us that besides this metallicity, this negative metallicity radians, there is a fraction of galaxies that show a uh, very weak metallicity and even positive metallicity radians. In this case the inner regions are less enriched than the outer parts. And that means uh, that these processes may be that um, have um, produced this decrease of the metallicity radian in these galaxies were very extreme and actually blow uh, 
a lot of gas from the and rich gas from the central region and invert the metallicity gradient, or there is a large amount of gas inflow directly accreted to the central region with lower metallicity that inverted the metallicity gradient. But the general picture is that we have this trend with a stellar mass so that uh, uh, the contribution of this uh, inverted or flat metallicity gradient seems to be larger in low metallicity, uh, low stellar mass galaxy, which is uh, uh, which can be explained because they have lower also lower potential wells. Uh, if we go to higher redshift, uh, we've got this uh, picture also where there is a trend uh, as we move from redshift zero to almost redshift four to have an even uh, increasing contribution of galaxy with flatter uh, or even uh, inverted metallicity radians. So you can see here, the uh, except the lines, all the points and the boxes are the observations. So you can see that from redshift zero, where we have most of the negative metallicity gradient. As we move to higher redshift, we have most, uh, mainly very uh, weak metallicity gradients or even positive metallicity gradients. Um, this is a compilation from 2019, and this is our observations from 2022 uh, between um, of metallicity gradients in the range, uh, in the redshift range uh, between uh, 2 and 2.3 from different uh, authors. And in particular, the red, um, the red uh, points um, uh, show the metallicity gradients of galaxies or star forming galaxies uh, in a very dense region at, uh, at about redshift two. So you can see that at this high redshift, uh, it, even with uh, quite, I mean, an, a significant number of uh, measured uh, metallicity gradients, there is first a large variety, okay? Uh, and also a slight trend or a trend to have a, a large, an important contribution of these uh, positive metallicity gradients. And this is what we wanted to understand using the simulation. So we started uh, we using our own simulations and then we moved to in the last year to the Eagle simulations. And we have analyzed the metallicity gradients in the high resolution run of the 25 mega, uh, megaparsec cube box and the 100 megaparsec cube box. And here we can identify both types of gradients. So most of the galaxy have negative weak metallicity gradient, but they have a very well defined negative metallicity gradient. But some galaxies have this inverted metallicity gradients. So we did this extended, we um, fit this uh, metallicity gradient to this uh, galaxies and we make sure that all the, the, the metallicity profiles that we determine from the simulations are well resolved. And with this information, we study the metallicity gradients as a function of the stellar mass. And you can see here the results as a line with two colors um, from the Eagle simulation. This is a 100 uh, cube megaparsec uh, box. Um, and this uh, black uh, symbols are the, um, the observations by, from different authors. And the first, you, we can see here that in general, the, the metallicity gradients that we obtain from the from uh, the star forming regions in the Eagle simulations tend to be a little uh, flatter, a little weaker than the observations. Okay, um, and also there is a dependency with the with the merger, this history of merger that they have. The, the galaxies that we have that have a merger, uh, an important merger. Um, tend to have negative metallicity, slightly negative metallicity gradient than the other ones, and they don't show any correlation or any significant trend with the stellar mass. And the ones that didn't have uh, mergers, significant mergers, they kind of show a trend to, uh, to get flatter, to get a uh, flatter metallicity gradient for increasing uh, stellar mass. And most of these galaxies are actually disk dominated galaxies. So this is. Um, in, I mean, because of the, the the range of masses that we can resolve with this simulation, uh, we are uh, in global agreement, I would say, with the with the observation, but with the uh, the problem that uh, the metallicity gradients in the simulation uh, seems to be uh, weaker um, than the than what we found in in observations. Now, if we look at the metallicity gradients as a function of the size of the galaxy, and here I'm using. Uh, the one over the scale length of the disk, um, and we separate the negative the galaxies with a negative and positive metallicity gradient. We see that the, for the ones with negative metallicity gradients, there is a very good correlation with the with the size, and this correlation is um, in very good agreement with observation. The orange um, line as the is the observed relation. Um, reported by Bresol in 2019 for Regis Zero Galaxies. 
and the uh, what are the purple or the whatever the kind of red uh, line is the is the predicted uh, trend uh, by uh, Brantzos and Bossier for a disk um, that forms uh, conserving fully conserving the angular momentum in a in a halo with a lambda of 0.07. So what we found in the simulations, and which agree with the observation, is that the, that the gradients of these uh, galaxies are um, have a relation which is slightly flatter than predicted by the by a scenario with full uh, angular momentum conservation. And we understand why, because galaxies do not form exactly following a full conservation of angular momentum. And all the processes that happen or affected the mixing of the chemical elements and the regulation of the star formation in the galaxy modify that relation, but still they, they follow this very nice trend. In the case of the galaxy with inverted metallicity gradient, there is no trend at all. I mean, they, there is no correlation with the size. So that implies or suggests that the process that modified the metallicity gradient in this way, in such way, um, has nothing to do with the, the, the process of assembly of the galaxy, but has, but, but has something that, or with a scale size of angular momentum scenario, is something that is a, um, are mechanisms that modified or are more violent in a sense of, or and disturb the, the distribution of chemical, chemical elements within the galaxy. And, um, and we also explore um, the, um, the depletion time, okay, the rate at which the gas is consuming these galaxies with positive and negative metallicity gradient. And for the galaxy, for the low mass galaxies, uh, for galaxies with less than 10 to the 5 solar masses, we found that the galaxies with a positive metallicity or inverted metallicity gradients are consuming their gas more slowly and a longer time scale than the ones that have negative metallicity gradients. And this suggested that the galaxies that keep their metallicity gradient uh, with a negative slope are the ones that still have gas and are, con are continuously forming stars um, and, um, and uh, given shape to these negative profiles. In the case of the other ones, the ones with inverted metallicity gradients, they are, they are more uh, consistent with uh, having had a very strong starburst, uh, like about two years ago. Uh, we also measure the evolution of the metallicity gradients as a function of redshift in the Eagle simulation. And we can find what we found is a very, very weak chemical uh, evolution in media, so this is the median, the blue line is the median uh, gradients as a function of redshift, and the shaded area enclosed the 25th, uh, the 25 and the 75 uh, percentiles. And the black, um, the black points are the observations. Uh, we can see that from redshift zero to redshift two, uh, the, on average, the change is very mild, it's about 0 0.02 dex per kiloparsec but also recall that the metallicity gradients are quite quick, uh, weak themselves. So, uh, so it's a very weak evolution towards uh, becoming more positive, but again, the, the metallicity gradients that we get in these simulations are uh, quite weak. So it's not uh, negligible. So uh, and at low redshift, we have uh, um, systems that converge to a metallicity gradient um, or, or we have less dispersion, less variability of metallicity gradient. But as we move to higher ratio, we have a larger dispersion. Also, we can we did study the, the, the dependence with the stellar mass uh, in different uh, ratio interval. And we can see that the dispersion increase uh, for a given mass, it increased uh, with increasing ratio. And well, at ratio, um, at high ratio, we don't have so many galaxies to make a, a robust conclusion. But between redshift, uh, between redshift 0 and 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and 1 point and about 1, we can see that the, effectively the, the variety of metallicity gradient increase and we have a larger fraction of, uh, of both. So what we call a strong metallicity, a strong positive metallicity gradient and a strong negative metallicity gradients. Okay? And in order to make a statistical analysis of these uh, of these uh, metallicity gradients as a function of redshift and also as a function of mass, we divided the sample uh, in, B, in in three intervals of mass, and then we classified the metallicity gradients in a strong negative, strong positive, and weak metallicity gradients, and see if there is a trend or uh, for this uh, metallicity gradient to be associated. Uh, to a recent major merger event or to a recent starburst. Okay, so here we have 
the cumulative uh, fraction of metallicity gradients divided in these four categories as a function of the, the time of the last major merger and the function of the time of the last uh, uh, starburst. And we can see that for the low mass and the intermediate mass galaxy, there is a slight trend for the galaxies uh, with a recent starburst or a recent merger to have a strong metallicity gradients uh, and a strong positive metallicity gradients. But for the galaxy that have a more massive, the more massive galaxy, uh, we have also, we have the inverted relation. They tend to have a strong uh, negative metallicity gradients associated to these events. And we think uh, this is uh, what we found in the in the paper that this is because um, these galaxies uh, consume. Uh, they are in a different stage of evolution at the time we are seeing compared with the other ones that have more gas available to uh, activate the star form uh, uh, the star formation activity and um, and have lower potential wells. So in summary, uh, in summary for this part, um, and I, how am I doing with the time? Sorry, can I ask? How much time do I have? 10 minutes. 10 minutes? OK. So um, because here, what we did is um, we estimate uh, the samples at each available redshift. We selected the galaxy. We measured the metallicity gradients in each sample independent at each redshift, independently of the other redshift. So we don't know if we are not following the progenitors okay? uh, exactly. OK. But we did this uh, work for some for a subsample of galaxies uh, to try to get more insight in, in the galaxies uh, that have this strong ne uh, positive metallicity gradient and a strong uh, negative metallicity gradients, which are shown here as the um, <clears throat> as the line, uh, the teal line and the pink line. Okay. Um, so what we did is we selected galaxies at redshift. 0.5 that at that redshift have a strong positive metallicity gradient and a strong negative metallicity gradient. And we search for their progenitors at redshift 1 and they are descended at redshift 0.1. And we study the morphology of this galaxy, the evolution of the morphology of the galaxy, the evolution of the size of the galaxy, and of course the, the, the metallicity gradients. And what we found uh, in summary is that galaxy with um, strong negative metallicity gradients um, tend to uh, to have also um, to be in um, in more these dominated uh, galaxies at redshift one and they evolve uh, uh, increasing their size and uh, becoming even more these dominated so the metallicity gradient even though there are some galaxies that have some positive metallicity gradients at a higher redshift because you can see that they are sorry i'm talking about the negative ones here um, you have the the negative metallicity gradient most of the of them have a weak metallicity gradients or negative or negative metallicity gradients and they evolve towards this uh, um, uh, like um uh, converge to a flat or a weak metallicity gradient at redshift zero. The ones with uh, positive metallicity gradients to be, tend to be more spherical dominated. You can see here the, the, the disk to total uh, mass ratio. So here you have that the, the on average they have 0.22 and here 0.22. If I don't, I don't have my glasses on, sorry. Uh, but they, uh, they are um, more spherical dominated than the ones uh, that the galaxy with negative metallicity gradients have an average 0. Uh, 0.46 uh, of ratio of the uh, of this to total ratio. So these galaxies um, are um, more uh, have a larger bulge compared to the to the disk, and they uh, at redshift the ones that have a, a positive metallicity gradient at redshift 0. 0.5 they also tend to have a, a spread of a, a larger spread of metallicity gradient at higher higher redshift. And they converge also to a, to a distribution which is comparable to the one at uh, for the negative metallicity gradient. This is because we have a, a very um, a very small variation of metallicity gradient at redshift zero, uh, but they are less uh, uh, they continue to be uh, less dominated by the disk. So. As you can see, it's a very, it's kind of a messy because the, the signals are not so uh, clear, but the trends are statistically significant. 
we can associate the, um, the, 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 the impact of the mergers or the gas accretions uh, uh, to the, um, the shape of um, as mechanisms that shape the metallicity gradients as a strong positive or a strong negative. Uh, and we can also estimate from this analysis that the phase of the strong negative and the strong positive lasts about two giga years. And then the galaxy uh, evolved or um, converged to a weak metallicity gradient. Okay? But uh, we cannot see in detail with this simulation what is going on. So in order to improve this, we move to the analysis of, uh, of the CLO simulation, where we are running these uh, zooming simulations that represent small groups. Um, with a different level of resolution, we have uh, two levels, 10 to the 5 and 10 to the 4 gas, uh, uh, gas mass particles. And we have a large number of snapshots, and we can follow the evolution of the material as it, as it um, flows into the galaxies. And we can also measure the metallicity gradients as a function of time with much more precision. Okay? Uh, Catalina Casanueva talked about the evolution of the angular momentum and how it can be uh, misaligned with the stellar with the stellar uh, disk between I mean this alignment between the angular momentum of the stellar and the gas disk, but we are also using this analysis to study the gas the properties of the gas that fall into the galaxies and how it changes the metallicity gradient. So, in this work, which is mainly done by Brian Tapia, um, we uh, take. Uh, a certain galaxies, a few set, a small set of galaxies, but we study the galaxy with large detail and we study the evolution of the metallicity radians with large detail from redshift uh, about uh, two to redshift zero. And you can see here two examples, and these are the metallicity gradients that we have, and the lines are fit to these are fit to these metallicity gradients. But we can see, uh, and we have found that um, that the, the metallicity gradients can uh, be uh, fitted. Um, by two uh, exponentials or even three exponentials, okay, in the analysis of the Eagle simulation, which has fitted one exponential uh, profile between 0.5 and 1.5 effective radius. But in this case, in this analysis, we are doing a much detailed work and we are um, searching and identifying uh, the profiles that need two exponentials or even three exponential. And in a sense, we are searching for the best combination that reproduces this metallicity gradient. So we have that for some galaxy, we have an inner metallicity gradient, a mid metallicity gradient, and an outer metallicity gradient. And you can see here with different color the evolution of these different metallicity gradients. And the idea is to try to understand the variation at different of the distribution of the of the metallicities at different uh, uh, range in different range of the galaxy. Uh, and associate this or try to understand why they change and how they are coupled, uh, their changes are uh, um, coupled uh, uh, as a function of the star formation activity in these different regions, as a function of the interaction or the environment where these galaxies are, because we have the, we have the, uh, the information of the satellites that are around these uh, galaxies, the ones and how they, uh, their, or how they uh, their orbits, um, as a function of time and also the merger history. And we can also estimate, uh, sorry by this poor uh, image, um, this is the rate of accretion of material from different sources at the in the different um, regions identified uh, uh, in the metallicity gradients. So the inner, the outer and the, and the mid uh, metallicity gra uh, gradients regions. Um, and we can see that uh, the contribution from unbound gas, that will be gas that comes from directly from the filaments, from other galaxies, the galaxies that interact, but not necessarily uh, and, and eventually merge uh, or not, but uh, the, the strip material. Um, and also from the same galaxy, because uh, the galaxies can have their material redistributed even during interactions. Uh, and part of the material can uh, move from the uh, from the out from the outer parts to the inner parts, and this will change also the the metallicity gradient. So we are doing this uh, a very detailed uh, analysis at the moment, um, and um, I also want to give you a, a brief uh, summary of all, all the projects that we are working at the moment uh, with the CLO. Most of them, sorry. Um, we are, have also uh, analyzed in detail uh, the impact of the infalling, um, the impact of the environment 
on the infalling satellites in these uh, zooming simulations. And this was uh, a work uh, led, by, led by Silvio Rodriguez, uh, Diego uh, Garcia Lambas, and Nelson Padilla. And uh, it's already submitted. And then we are now uh, going to the second, uh, second part of the work, which is studying the, uh, the impact on the metallicity of the intergroup medium. And the, and the effect of the, <coughs> of the environment in the metallicity profiles of the infalling satellites. Okay. And we are also studying, okay, uh, we are also studying the stellar halos of these uh, galaxies and now uh, uh, um, focusing not only a Milky Way stellar halo, but going down to other, to smaller galaxies to see if, uh, if how these uh, smaller galaxies and the Milky Way, if they have a stellar halo, how this stellar halo is assembled and uh, the co-evolution of this stellar halo with the, with, the, with the galaxy itself. And also we are uh, developing this uh, tool to um, mimic IFU observations and to have an spectra uh, for each of the spaxel, the simulated spaxel. And there was a poster by Anel Cornejo explaining the, our first step. So at the moment we have this ideal uh, IFU, where we have the spectra from, from each uh, region of the regions that we want uh, from the uh, from the galaxy, uh, the simulated galaxy, and the idea is to um, to make this more realistic uh, in the next step, and also to have uh, emission lights, uh, so that we can uh, compare the result. We can estimate the result um, uh, dynamical chemical dynamical uh, relations and, uh, and compare that and study that in comparison to the global ones. And also because we want to estimate the metallicity gradients and the metallicities in general by using the emission lines in the case of the star forming gas in a similar way as observer do with the, with the observations and, and try to understand better uh, what we're getting from the simulation and what we can improve from our models. And there are also um, other projects working with the shape of the dark matter halos and with improving of the uh, of the uh, high mass x-ray binary feedback which was included in our simulation in our code by Celeste Artale and now it's being uh, uh, updated um, so there are many projects that can be done with these simulations and uh, I, we are welcome to hear uh, new ideas of people interested to work uh, with the CLO simulation so to end I want to comment to you to uh, a new uh, line of research, which is quite um, uh, interesting and multidisciplinary, uh, because we are now using, uh, I mean, the, the, I have to say that the project is led by Paula Joffre from the Universidad Diego Portales in Chile. And uh, what we are doing is uh, we are using the chemical abundance as the ADN of the, of the, of the stellar population. And borrow from biology what is called the phylogenetic trees to build up or to try to use this to trace the galaxy for galaxy formation uh, history okay so uh, we are using the uh, sorry the numerical simulations as a test bed for this new tool because there are many things to to work on and to adapt from the biology uh, and to understand because galaxies uh, will have their own complication and the way uh, their history of assembly is, uh, is quite complex. And in order to be able to use these phylogenetic trees and transform them into phylogenetic galactic trees, we need to understand exactly what they are telling us. So this is the first uh, genetic phylogenetic tree that we got from our from a, from a simulation. This is a very simple simulation of a galactic disk so where we isolated galaxy with nothing happened just evolved uh, form stars regularly and and have a very quiet life so we can uh, have a first idea of what the trees how to make trees galactic uh, genetic trees from the simulations and the numbers that you see are the ages so they are arranged now uh, they are not arranged by age, by age but they are arranged by the similarity in their chemical abundances. So the information to build these trees are the chemical abundances, the combination of different chemical elements, and uh, how uh, similar or different uh, they are from the from the neighboring uh, stellar populations. Um, so uh, I wanted to mention because I am really very excited for this uh, to work in this area with biologists and uh, mathematicians, and I think it will bring a new um, perspective to the way we analyze uh, the, the, uh, the process of galaxy formation. So to end, these are my two lines of research. Uh, 
I am um, uh, with my with my group and with my collaborators. We are focusing on understand chemical dynamical patterns as fossils of galaxy assembly um, um, in a variation of problems. Uh, and for that, we need to understand how galaxy forms also. So uh, it gives um, it uh, is a comprehensive, a very comprehensive uh, line of research, and we're using. Uh, Eagle, Illustris, Aurigas, and the Cielo simulations, and we are all working with the strong collaborations with observers in the Cata Center of Excellence. And the other main line of research that I am starting, as I just mentioned, is this uh, phylogenetic galactic trees um, that we uh, um, we are working. Um, and I mean, I am part of this uh, new uh, uh, nucleo we call Millennium Coleris, and we have, you know. Uh, actually enjoying quite a lot uh, this uh, development of a new approach to, to study or to use chemical abundances as, uh, as tracers of galaxy formation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patricia. Very complete review. So questions, please, you're in the auditorium. Or in the... Okay, online. Um, Emmanuel Rios, please. Okay. Um, hello. Uh, hello, Dr. Patricia. Thank you for your very interesting talk. So I wonder about the AGN, AGN feedback process. Uh, how, what is the role of the AGN feedback in the flattening of, of the metallicity gradient that you mentioned? Because, okay, I'm not very used with this topic, so maybe it's a basic question. So I wonder about this because you mentioned about the mergers. So we know maybe mergers can reactivate the AGN. So this is my yeah. question. Yeah, we, uh, with the Eagle simulations that have a AGN feedback, um, I um, I actually tried to search for the impact of the AGN feedback, but I didn't find any very uh, clear trend. So, in the more massive galaxies, the the, the AGN feedback is quite, I mean, it, it's important and it, it might have blow part of the material from the inner region, and in this case, it will contribute to flatten the metallicity gradient. So. Um, and in a sense, it is included, their effects are included in when we estimate uh, the time of the, of, the, of the last starburst, if I can find it, which is here. Uh, because we, here we are agnostic of what it processed, the, what, what was the cause of the starburst, but the starburst could have been associated or could have triggered um, uh, AGM feedback also. But as I said, I tried to find uh, indications and I couldn't. And part of it, I think, is because I have very uh, only 20 steps, snapshots to follow the evolution. So it's very, um, it's complicated to extract a clean signal of the effect of the of the processes. Now, in the Cielo simulation, we are looking to smaller galaxies, and we don't have yet. Uh, um, AGM feedback. So when we include it, hopefully. Uh, we will be able to study in more detail that. So maybe also we're, we're also using the illustri simulation to study the effects of um, of mergers, and he, and there maybe because we have a lot um, a, a lot of snapshots, so we can follow the in time uh, the effects uh, with more detail. Then maybe there we can uh, disentangle the effects uh, of the AGM feedback from the supernova feedback. But at the moment, uh, as I say, I try to find a signal, a clear signal, but I, to differentiate the supernova feedback from the AGM feedback, but I couldn't with the eagle. OK, OK. Thank you very much. OK. Here, Nelson. Hey, Patricia. So uh, I was wondering, since you mentioned industries and since you also have the zero simulations, have you been able to, to compare the range of uh, gradients that you get from different simulations i guess it's related to, to emmanuel's question right well what is the importance of different feedback uh, yeah i mean the feedback uh, yes i, I, I have, we haven't uh, compared ourselves the the metallicity gradients of the illustrious yet but there is a paper there is a work already published from the illustrious collaboration where they show the, their metallicity gradients and the evolution of the metallicity gradients. And they found that most of them are negative metallicity gradients. So 
Yes, they will depend. Um, there will be a dependence, uh, I think, on the way on how the subgrid physics is implemented and how the supernova and the AGM feedback are implemented. Because if we compare only Eagle and and Illustris, we can see that they both have um, a, a negative metallicity gradients, but Eagle have a large fraction of inverted metallicity gradient, and that could imply that the the AGM feedback or even the supernova feedback acts uh, more strongly in the in the eagle simulation than in the illustrious simulation. Um, so I myself haven't done that detailed comparison, but I think it will be quite interesting. But the idea will be to have exactly the same galaxy run with the same with the, with the different codes. And in our case, as I say, with the supernova feedback, we can and the injection and the inflows, we can explain. The, post, the, the origin of the positive and the, neg uh, the positive or the inverted metallicity gradients. So, because the, the inflow of, uh, of low metallicity gas, either just uh, by secular evolution or from the, uh, from the filament, uh, they both uh, decrease the metallicity in the inner region and invert, make uh, this change in the slope. And the supernova feedback eject material and uh, and enrich material and also the AGM feedback and they all uh, tend to decrease the metallicity in the inner region so the effect is the same so we have to find a way of disentangle this effect and the only the only way is actually to study the simulations for me i think in in detail and comparing what are the impact when you change that um, now that you mentioned uh, that, and I, I, rem I recall that in the first paper that I analyzed from the Eagle simulation, sorry, that they have a, a small set, I mean, they have a 25 megaparsec box that was run with different supernova feedback uh, strength. So they have a weak a supernova feedback, uh, the one that we uh, that we use, in, that they use in the simulation, in the suite of simulation, and a stronger one. And there you can see that you increase the, the, the impact of the, of the supernova feedback, then uh, you get flatter metallicity gradients and inverted metallicity gradients. So the supernova feedback does the work. Um, uh, but uh, unfortunately, when people test the impact of the AGM feedback, they tend to take out the AGM feedback and leave everything else like, just like that, okay? And when you do that in the Eagle simulation, there is, I mean, the galaxies are a disaster, right? are not nice at all, but there is no set where they, there is no run where they have tried to fit the observations without including the aging feedback. So it's a very difficult, I mean, it, it doesn't actually answer the question, okay? Because everything else, all the other processes had, has been uh, tuned to work with the aging feedback. If you take out the aging feedback, they, the other, once all together they won't reproduce the, the observed trends as well okay and it's obvious because you fit everything together so the for me the way will be to take out the agm feedback and try to fit the observations only with the other ones um and and regarding the metallicity the the sorry the metallicity gradient. of course we know that for large masses we need the agm feedback otherwise we don't fit the metallicity the, the observations so um I guess the quest the, the best way to do it is to actually have the initial the same initial condition and run the same initial condition with the different uh, codes with physics and see um what is affecting that. Uh, but again, it's not so simple because chemical elements change the cooling times, uh sometimes the then they don't they the, the star formation proceeds with a different rate. So there are a lot of changes associated with that that um, are non-linear. So um, I don't have a clean answer, but yeah, that will be very interesting to do, Nelson. Thank you, Patricia. Okay, last short question, please. Cynthia. Hi, Patricia. Uh, Hi. Very short questions. One is uh, if uh, in the Eagle simulation, the the Asian feedback is uh, just thermal, or if it is if it uh, has also is the kinetic um, Asian feedback, so to blow up particles. And the other one is, 
Um, what about the total metallicity content of uh, these galaxies if they are in in agreement with the uh, observation? Thank you. So, yeah, so the, the, the uh, eagle um, simulation have a, a kinetic, yes, they can blow the particles and you can actually follow the particles to see. Um, I mean, it's not very easy, but you can, uh, because the change in temperature, you, they have both the thermal tem temperature and the, and the kick out of the particles. So the, there is a move, there is a transportation of material okay. uh, outside of the, of the galaxies. And, um, and the, the other question, I forgot. The metallicity content. <laughs> ah, yes. So the, in the case of Eagle, the 25 megaparsec box reproduced the mass metallicity relation quite well. Uh, and the 100 mega metallic, uh, megaparsec box um, does not, it's quite flat. Um, our simulations, they do reproduce the mass metallicity relation. So I think that's a very important check. And this is why we move to the 25 megaparsec box because the, metallic, the mass metallicity relation is much better reproduced for the Eagle simulations and also it has a uh, higher resolution. Um, but uh, yes, we try to check that at least the global properties are reproduced um, and yes they are okay thank you okay let's thank again patricia